You know what makes me run for the border zone? And no, it's not Taco Bell. No, it's not Shack Mommy's either, but that is a good guess. What really makes me run for the border zone is how dangerous the nearby regions are. To the north, you have mandatory church. To the west, you have angry giraffes. To the south, you have gang wars with a pinch of substance abuse. To the east, well, we don't talk about what goes on there. So, rather than face all these hostilities around you, why not build a base near the same region you spawned in? Mama's cooking ain't that bad after all, right? All jokes aside, posting up in the border zone isn't a bad idea at all. In fact, you might be surprised by how great of a region it is. The border zone has everything you need to set up a base. Decent water coverage, a healthy supply of stone, and ore veins which aren't too hard to find. For fertility, you can expect to have the arid type in most parts of this region. By comparison, you'd get a similar level of arid fertility in Shem, Auckland's Gulf, or Skinner's Rome. The border zone also boasts two major settlements, the Hub and Squen, as well as a way station and a trade ninja bar. This way station in the southeast is critical to make note of since it has a robotic shop and a skeleton repair bed. Furthermore, this way station is close to two of my favorite border zone base locations. More on that later. As one might imagine, given that the border zone is where most new games begin, the enemies here are not as harsh as in other zones. Namely, there aren't any cannibals or beak things. If you're knocked unconscious, the worst that can happen to you is being enslaved and taken north to rebirth. While it might sound goofy to say this, being enslaved and sent to rebirth is far from the worst thing that can happen to you in Kenshi. A little purification for the sake of Akron never hurt nobody. To get into the specific mobs in the border zone, I guess it would be possible for bone dogs to eat you when you're unconscious. This would require a great deal of bad luck though, since bone dogs aren't super common here. As usual, I'd recommend steering clear of them, since bone dog attacks are OP. I still remember in one of my first playthroughs, I was desperate for food and saw an injured bone dog puppy in the distance. I thought to myself that desperate times call for desperate measures, but little did I know that I should have called an ambulance for myself, not the bone dog. After taking two hits to the chest, I bled out. I swore from that day on that I would leave bone dogs alone, I'd say you should do the same. Another uncommon spawn in the border zone are skin spiders. You should follow the same rules with these guys as you do with bone dogs. Avoid them if you can. They have high damage attacks, but their movement speed is slow, so it's easy to outmaneuver them. Although the Garu spawns in the border zone aren't as large as some other places, you will see them from time to time. If you feel up to the challenge, you want to fight them, they are good to hunt, giving a good amount of meat and hide. Goats are similar in that manner, although I would say goats, because they travel in larger groups, they're a bit more challenging than Garu, which is a bit ironic given how small goats are. The thing is, animals in Kenshi usually have rapid attacks that stagger characters, which if you played Kenshi for some time, you're probably well aware of how overpowered animal attacks can be. For humanoid spawns, you have starving bandits first. They're the lowest rung of the economic ladder in this zone, and they're not too powerful. It's just that their group size can be quite large. During most playthroughs, I might use starving bandits for training. Otherwise, if I'm not planning on fighting them, I just avoid them altogether. Dust bandits are similar in this way, being a step above the starving bandits. They'll have crossbows and horse choppers, so they'll be a little bit harder to take down compared to starving bandits. The big thing with dust bandits, though, is that they're going to have camps where, I mean, there could be 30, sometimes 40 dust bandits around that camp. What you're going to want to do is use these for toughness training by being repeatedly knocked unconscious. That's usually the main way folks increase their toughness skill. Although they are rare, you'll probably run into Band of Bones. And they are tougher than Dust Bandits, but usually their spawn numbers are lower. I'd say they are also good for training. The big thing you want to keep in mind though is that they do have armor piercing or uh, blunt damage weapons. So regardless of what you're wearing, some of that damage is going to get through if you're hit. The trade-off though is that because they have higher stat values, you will get more XP per hit depending on how high of a melee defense your character has. Without spoiling too much, if you decide to live in the border zone, know that there are a couple of hostile faction HQs in the region. So you can expect to have your base attacked by these factions within the first week of setting up your base. Depending on how skilled your characters are, these raids could be great training opportunities. But, at least for me, my, during my first time, I was raided by a certain faction that needs not be mentioned, 
and my squad was devastated in true Kenshi fashion. With this in mind, I'll briefly touch on some base defense concepts for anyone looking to get started with their first base. Since this is the border zone after all, it's going to be where a lot of people do build their first base. First off, I'd recommend having the techs for Mark II crossbows as well as defensive gates level 2 before you set up your base. If you don't have these techs or you don't have the needed materials to set up defensive measures, then there's nothing wrong with leaving your base and returning later when you're ready. A step beyond that, there's also nothing wrong with bailing on your base before attackers arrive. Any non-food items won't be stolen by the attackers, so don't risk your life defending an incomplete base. Everything you built will still be there when you come back. And of course, if you think your characters are mostly ready, you're just not sure, you can always send a character out to scout the attacking party to see how strong it is. Also, you could have a character go to a city or a way station and hire a mercenary crew to get a little bit of backup in case things do go poorly. If you'd like some inspiration for where to set up your base in the border zone, I was able to find a lot of different great locations in this region. It was honestly difficult narrowing it down to the ones you see here. There's just a lot of good land What's also great about the border zone is that you're almost always close to a neutral settlement where you can keep your character safe if things do go badly. I can say well honestly I don't really have a favorite location. I have multiple favorites here for different reasons. These two in the southeast I like for the swamp and the arid fertility and the benefit of that is you can grow rice weed for producing sake or cactus for producing cactus rum and then whichever one you're not using for alcoholic beverages you can use for food it just makes uh, production so much easier speaking of which if you want to make a lot of money without making hashish runs to flat saloon let's say you can grow cactus in the border zone, make rum from that, and then sell it in the swamp, and you will get a price boost from that trade route. It won't be as much as the price boost that you would get from Hashish, but that trade route is much easier to manage earlier in the game compared to running all the way to Flats Lagoon, where you have to potentially travel through Beak Thing territory and encounter some of the more difficult factions. And then there's this location here, which by its own right is just an excellent mega base location. There is just loads of flat land here and you have the iron and copper that you need. It's awesome. And I wouldn't knock any of the other locations either. They're all quite good in their own way. And hear me now. Do not interpret me putting off making a border zone guide as evidence that I do not like the border zone as a base, location, region. The actual reason why this border zone guide arrived later than the other guides was because I have just settled here so many times and the danger level is significantly lower than most other regions. Since this is true, I'd say the border zone is probably the best starter location and you can even stay there for the rest of the game if you wanted to. It's that good. And it's centrally located too. So if you get bored, you want to try out something more difficult, you're close to the center of the map. So your distance that you need to travel to get to your other base location isn't that far. If you do feel like your current base location is too safe, then don't you worry. I have a suggestion for you. If you head on over to the Bone Fields, rest assured you will find the challenge that you're looking for, as well as some compelling challenges in nearby regions. Well, on my end, that's all for now, and I will see you all in the next one.